This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these isometric maze icons using Adobe Illustrator. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Illustrator. Go ahead and open up a new document sized to 1280 by 1280 pixels and then we'll go, we'll go ahead and set up our workflow so that we're all working with a similar view here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is come up here to where it says view and make sure the only things you have enabled are smart guides and snap to point. Make sure those two are enabled and if anything else is enabled go ahead and turn that off and then come over here to where it says window and make sure you have color enabled. Don't worry about anything else here. These are just the windows on the side here. We're not going to, as you can see I have these windows enabled here because that's my default uh, workflow but we're not going to need these for this tutorial. We're just going to need color so as long as you have color enabled there you're good to go. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is come over here to our colors, our foreground and background color. I'm just going to click that arrow to switch those two around so that black is the foreground and white is the, uh, the stroke color. And then I'm going to select that white stroke color and I'm going to click this little red X right there to get rid of that because we don't want a stroke on the uh, objects we're going to create. And then I'll just click back on the fill color so that's overlaying on top of the stroke color. And now I will grab the uh, rectangle tool and I'm going to create a perfectly symmetrical rectangle on the canvas by holding shift and alt and clicking and dragging on the canvas like that. We want to make the size of this 50 pixels by 50 pixels so I'll come up here to where it says uh, the rectangle width. I'll triple click that, delete everything in there, hit 5-0 and hit enter. Before doing that let me back up a little bit here. Make sure you have this lock icon enabled. This this icon that says constrain width and the height proportions, that, that ensures that it changes the width with, with the height. So go ahead and make sure you have that enabled. Then go ahead, hit 5-0 and enter. And now what we want to do is take this rectangle and put this towards the top left of the screen over here. We're going to create 20 copies of this rectangle going horizontally and then 20 copies going vertically. So let me zoom in on this a little bit by holding alt and rolling up the mouse wheel a few times. I'm going to take this square, I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to click and drag and then hold shift and alt until it snaps onto the right side of the square next to it like that. And what I want to do now is press control D on the keyboard and it's just going to duplicate that action. So as you can see we now have three. We need to make 17 more. I'm going to hit control D 17 more times. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And we're going to do the same thing going vertically. I'm going to select all of these up here. Let me zoom in again. Click and drag and then hold shift and alt until it snaps onto the bottom right there. Let me zoom out a little bit. And again we have two so we need 18 more. I'm going to hit control D three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And now we have all of the squares we need to create our maze. So let me put this towards the center of the screen a little bit here. And I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to come down to the second row of squares and I'm going to click on one of them and delete them like that by pressing delete on the keyboard. Same thing over here. I'll click on that one, delete it. Three, four, five, six. Basically this entire thing is going to be the maze and the squares that we delete are going to be the pathways within the maze. So I'm going to go and click and drag over some squares here and delete them so I can create a little pathway going through the maze here. I'll come over here. I'll delete those. come down here I'll click on that one delete that one and again this doesn't have to be an actual maze like that somebody could follow along with this just has to look like a maze it's just a design we're not creating an actual uh, like an actual puzzle for somebody to solve here so I'm gonna go through and delete these like that pretty simple delete those and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and delete the rest of these squares real quick I'm gonna speed up the video so you don't have to sit here and watch me do all of this and I'll, I'll catch up with you when I'm done Okay, so once we're done, we've gone through and, and created our maze pathway. What we have to do is combine all of these squares together now to be one shape. So I'm going to click and drag over all of them so that they're all selected like that. And I'm going to come over here to the Shape Builder tool, which is over here in the toolbar. Or you could press Shift and M on the keyboard to grab it. And let me zoom in on this again. What I want to do is I want to click and drag a selection going through all of the squares here. And if you notice, as they're highlighting, 
once you let go and you're done clicking, you're going to see it unified it together as one object. And the, and the idea here is to just go through the entire object and connect everything together as one single uh, object like this. And while you're doing this, you just want to make sure that you don't accidentally click onto the, uh, the, uh, the negative space in there. Because as you can see there, if you do that, it's highlighting. It'll add that to the selection and your entire maze will be ruined. You'll have to undo it. So make sure you keep your selection within the, uh, the lines here. Just go through and do this real quick. And once that's done, we can go back to the select tool, which is up here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I want to click and drag over everything so that they're all selected. Based on the design of your maze, they may be as separate objects because they're not physically touching each other. We have to make a compound path out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select everything as, I, as I've done here and go to object, compound path and choose make. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold shift and alt. Uh, I'm actually going to, yeah, I'm going to click and drag to scale this down and then hold shift and alt so that it scales proportionately like that. I'm going to take this and move it towards the center of the page here and now we have to make this into a 3D isometric sort of icon. Uh, but first I just want to give it a different color. I'm going to maybe make this, uh, I'll make that um, something like that. You can choose whatever color you'd like. I'm going to go with that shade right there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. And the, uh, the options we want to work with up here where it says Position, just set that to Isometric Top. Leave everything else as it is, all these default settings, they should match. By default, it should match what you see here on my screen, but maybe double check it just to make sure that's the case. Go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, it created a 3D sort of object out of our maze icon. But what I want to do now is break this apart into individual pieces so I can give it a different color because those, those colors kind of wash into each other. They don't look very appealing in my opinion anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Object and click on Expand Appearance. And then I want to ungroup this a couple of times. I'll go to Object Ungroup. And then I'll go to Object Ungroup again. And if you click off of the, uh, the object here, it should be broken apart into individual pieces, as you can see here, which that is what we are going for. So let me zoom in on this a little bit. If you notice here, we have objects. These objects are colored in with three different colors. You have the light shade, which is on top. You have the medium shade, which is on the right over here, and you have the dark shade, which is on the left over here. And every single one of these shapes uses one of those three colors. So what I'm going to do is, instead of changing the color of each of these shapes individually, I'm going to click on just one of the, uh, the dark shapes right there, and I'm going to go to Select, Same, and I'm going to choose Fill Color. And it's going to select all of the objects in this canvas with that same fill color, and I'm just going to make that a color like red, like that. Let me click off of that to deselect everything. Now I want to take this medium shade right here and again go to select, same, fill color. And I'll make this something like blue, something like that. And let me go back up here to the top object. And again, select, same, fill color. And I just want to change the color of that until it's something that we find appealing kind of like that, trying to match what I did in the, uh, the thumbnail of the video there. Pretty close. So uh, that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating these vector isometric maze icons using Illustrator. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.